Hello and welcome to this Icon Data API tutorial. My name is Eve. I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quads. Today's tutorial is about the basics with regard to getting started on Windows. It's about the first steps with regard to the installation, configuration, and then some first steps with the Icon Data API itself. The three major points of the agenda are download and installation. We'll also show how to set up a Python environment, making use of the Conda package and environment manager for Python. And we will already go some first steps to retrieve via the Icon Data API and the Python wrapper package called Icon uh, Historical Data, both uh, numerical data as well as unstructured data, meaning in the form of news. Let me move to the Jupyter Notebook that accompanies this tutorial here about getting started on Windows. At the beginning, you see again the agenda, the three major points. And the first step is if you haven't done so already and if you are not using it already, to download the Icon desktop application. If you have it's running already and if your credentials ready and are locked in, then you should be good to go to the next steps. Otherwise, you would need to download it via the provided link. And once you get it installed and running based on your credentials, you should see the desktop application uh, with a similar setup as the one as you can see here from my machine. In the search field, um, you can then search for the app library and open it. Then you should search for the application ID generator and open it. And this allows you to then create some um, tokens. So you see in the back end, my Icon desktop application is running. So here I can search for the um, app library. See, this is also abbreviated by app lib. When I click on it, here it opens. And after a little while, I'm able to search the app library. And what we are looking for is the application ID generator. When you click on this, you are already here able to create a token and you should use the token for all the further steps. So I end this process here. And further steps means that once you have created your own token, you should create a simple text file. I call this here icon.cfg for configuration file, which just might have only two lines here. In square brackets, icon, then app ID uh, equals the um, ID that you um, have created. And this file should be readily available in the current working directory for the next steps. This is one way of doing it, but once you follow along these steps, you can reuse the credentials via these files easily later on. The next step would be to set up an appropriate Python environment. Uh, to this end, we recommend the use of a Miniconda 3.6 or Anaconda if you want to go with a larger installation. And you can use the Conda Package Manager, which underlies this distribution for the installation of packages. But not only that, you can also manage environments um, kind of conveniently. And this is what we want to do in the following. But first, after you have installed Miniconda, you should open the Anaconda prompt here on Windows. Then you should test whether Python from Miniconda is accessible. This might then look like this. You type simply uh, Python in the Anaconda prompt and some version will show up. And you might follow along here and say print hello icon world. This is just a little check. Uh, we provide you with a YAML file. Uh, which allows you to create an appropriate environment in a single step. You see the command here, command create, then you name the environment, and minus F is the flag here for file, and you should have such a file readily available uh, when you do this in the current working directory. And this is a file, I'm gonna quickly change here, going to this and open it for editing, where all the dependencies are listed here that you need. Um, this might be quite a bit. Some of them installed via Conda, others installed via PIP. 
Uh, this is a file that we will update regularly so that when we add content, uh, the respective libraries required will be added to this file as well. After such a environment is created, you can then start Jupyter Notebook. And based on the Jupyter Notebook I'm using here, you should be able to go the first steps. If you want to skip the Conda uh, steps with regard to creating an environment and you might have already your environments up and running, then you can simply install also the icon wrapper package that is required in any case uh, via the pip install icon command. This, of course, is always an option. Here, I do some imports. First, the icon Python wrapper package, then NumPy, pandas, couplings, something that we're going to use regularly for plotting, and a config parser to work with the configuration file. If we have a look at the versions, we assume that Python 3.6 is installed with the following versions for icon, numpy, pandas, and cufflinks, or later. Um, and once this is all ready, we can then connect to the icon data API. To this end, again, here the uh, desktop application needs to be running in the background because the connection is realized via the desktop application. I read in the um, credentials data and set the app ID here, via ek.set app ID accordingly. And the first check now is to retrieve historical end of day data for Apple stock for 2017. When I execute this cell and we are ready, we have retrieved our first data set here um, for the Apple stock price. And see, this is some 251. Uh, data rows, so roughly the typical 250, 252 uh, trading days per year. And we can use this data set, or at least a subset, to plot the data. And here I'm making use already of cufflinks. You see this here. The I uh, is from cufflinks, typical command, making use of matplotlib would be plot. But here we are using cufflinks, and we have set the um, plotting mode to offline here, which allows typically for faster execution. And to see the data, we have a nice interactive graph of the stock price. We can, for example, zoom in. We can use panning capabilities to move the graph a little bit or do the upscaling back to the original state. Then we retrieve here some news headlines with regard to Apple, another check. This time not about numerical price data, but rather about unstructured news data. I'm going to execute this code here. Uh, you see that we get a few articles about Apple with uh, different topics, actually. And um, this is just limited here, as you can see, to two particular hours at the end of January. So you see, based on this tutorial, tutorial where we covered download and installation and uh, created the Python environment necessary, at least theoretically, because in the back end I have done this step already before, uh, we were able to connect based on the token created in the application ID generator application. Uh, we could connect to the Icon Data API and downloaded historical data for Apple, both price data as well as news related to Apple stocks. So this showed that once we are ready, we can access the full capabilities of the Icon Data API. Towards the end of this Jupyter Notebook, you find Icon Data API developer resources, like overview, quick start documentation, downloads um, that might be helpful, also tutorials, and Q&A forums. In the um, in the search bar, you can also type uh, the IB in order to browse the data items, symbols, and so forth. This brings me to the end of this tutorial, where we've covered download and installation, talked about the Python environment that we might be able to create, and went the first steps based on the icon wrapper package. 
that sense, it remains for me to say happy Python coding and happy data analysis with the Icon Data API. See you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye. Take care.